channels. Today we're going to be taking a look at wire gates and expressions. They're quite... I'm just going to build myself a little workspace here. So just bear with us me a second. If I start using terminology or things that you don't understand, don't worry because it's just because I'm a Macam. So, right, okay. Um, start off, we're only going to be looking at arithmetic gates, comparison gates, um, time, and we might dip into selection if I'm feeling raunchy. Okay, so any the arithmetic gate ex um, section is mainly very self-explanatory. If you've ever done maths or you are a math student, you will probably understand most, if not all, of the things in here. You've got add, um, divide, subtract, uh, multiply, just all basic things here. So let's use multiply, for example, if we've got a, uh, make two buttons, both of one and zero. I will make this one of two. This one, one. So, if you look at the gate, you usually get a series of inputs that you can have. Um, so, A, which is this, multiplied by B, which is this button. So, at the moment, it's zero because it is zero multiplied by zero. If you were to turn this on, it's two multiplied by zero. If you were to turn that on, the output is two because it's two multiplied by one. Very simple expressions. In, in, in arithmetic, you have um, square root, subtract, round. The round gate's quite useful. There's the pi gate, which just outputs the constant of pi. Um, and very simple stuff to understand. So that's not too difficult. Um, moving on, we move to comparison. Now this is a logic gate. It takes in two values, and depending on whether or not a condition is true, it will output a 1 or a 0. So this is quite useful. If, for example, this is a greater than gate, so let's get with two buttons again. Got one and zero, and one and two. And we'll just wire that up. So if A, which is this one, is greater than B, which is this one, then output a value. Now at the moment, this is at zero, and this is at one. So two, so zero was obviously not greater than one, so the output is one. But if I turn this on, it is now a 1 because 2 is greater than 1. So that's good for just wiring up expressions. You can have um, comparison, you can have equal, not equal. If something isn't equal, then outputs a 1. If something's in the range or not in the range, it's, it's all very self explanatory. Um, time. This section is quite useful if you're ever trying to make something that's um, self sufficient or, or automated. The accumulator gate. Um, if we get another button, accumulates a value that it has feeding into it. So at the moment it's feeding zero, but if I was to turn this on, it's now holding two, and you can see the value there is steadily increasing, which is quite useful. Obviously, it, it holds a value unless you can reset it. With If you just cycle through the inputs there, it just shows you what you can do. Moving on, in time. There is the most of these I, I never use unless you're trying to show off. There's OS time, which outputs something, and if you I think it's in the selection, yeah, time and date decoder. And if I was to spawn a gate, uh, the three screens, the screen is also useful via tool. It's in display and. It allow it. You can it wires up numerical values. So let's say that's hours, that's minutes, and that is seconds. And then all we have to say is the time comes from there. And then you can see it is five minutes past. It's nearly five minutes past two, and that's the time, which is quite clever. So, you but you must use the time decoder. Otherwise, you're just going to end up with a strange output. Um, the timer value works like a stopwatch, uh, if uh, of any kind. Um, say we have a time of one and zero, so just a button, and let's have another one that's not in toggle just for the reset. So we can say it runs when this is active, and then you can see the time is going up, 
So if I switch that off, it's now not running. And if we tell it reset, when this is pressed, and press that, and now the time is zero. So if we press that again, the time will start going up. So that's good if you ever want to have a timer running on something, and you just need something to time. Um, the smoother. I was going to go over this in quite a bit of detail because it is quite a useful gate. Basically, what it does, if if it is fed a value, it will chip, and if, it, the, the, if that value then changes, it will change to that new value, but given a given a specified rate. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to spawn in wire physics a hydraulic which works just the same as a normal hydraulic would but you tell it what length to be at so I'm gonna spawn a button let's say I'm gonna make it 1 and 200 and make a toggle obviously so at the moment if I was to wire this up at length at that when I press this button it goes up to 200 and if I press it again it go the, the length is 1 but obviously if I were to stand on this and it would fire up to 200 I would obviously fly off into the distance and get hurt so if you're trying to make a lift or something that's no good so we can use the smoother expression which is here now if you have a look at the inputs it has two things A which is usually just the base input which is obviously going to be our button and rate now this is the rate at which things will change and I'm going to introduce you into something new which is the constant value which is pretty much what it says on the tin you can set what kind of type of value it is obviously we just use a number and I've set it to 10 so this means that it, the rate of change of the new value it received will change at a rate of 10 so the rate is 10 and all it does is just it, it holds the value if you were to have more than one constant value say I have three values of 30 and 100 then when I say the rate is that you can choose whichever one you want by cycling through the outputs but for the moment we're just going to stick with 10 so we say the length is equal to the smoother and now when I press the button it sets to 200 it rises off the ground nicely and nice and smoothly and doesn't and shouldn't hopefully catapult me into the sky if I were to stand on it which I've just missed twice and that is the smoother expression and that's also quite useful for building things then the selection is the value range now this is quite good for keeping things in order so say you've got something you, you've got a value that's going way out of hand like you've got I don't know G GPS coordinates but you don't want them to go too high so you can set a maximum and a minimum which is nice so let's say I've got this I've got a button that goes between um, 20 and 9001 no particular reason I'm choosing that value so I'll spawn my clock button right so say that the max that the minimum value is 30 and the maximum value is 100 so the value of this so at the moment if I were to spawn a screen just so we can have a look at what so at the moment the output is 30 although I don't see what, ah oh yes because it's the minimum value The minimum. if I was to set the minimum as 10 it would output 20 because that's what the thing is because that's what the button's input but if the minimum is at 30 it's just going to go as far down as it can to the minimum and not go any further so it's at 30 if I was to turn the button on now that the value is 9001 the maximum is 100 so it's only outputting 100 which so it helps you keep a little bit more control on your inputs um, I think that's going to be it for today I can't think of anything else to show you um, if you want to put in a request of what to do a tutorial I'm quite happily to see what I can do I think next time we're going to be looking at inputs and outputs in physics and just some of the things we can do with that so have fun bye